Hi and welcome to this tutorial on a, a new material or an existing material for trains called T-Bump Environment uh, and how to use that. We've had a question from one of the trains community uh, regarding this image and it says uh, obviously m.tbump environment uh, but how do you generate the bumps in a smoother manner? So I'm guessing uh, what they're saying here is to give this rippled effect they want to know how the reflection is kind of warped a little bit um, if that's wrong please post and we'll do another video to help you out but as far as we can interpret it that's what you're after so how this works is there's an environment map uh, built into the game which is used where you can see that reflection happening uh, this is a, a real image this is not the game image and then uh, we'll use a normal map to uh, displace that environment map. So we'll get to it now just so you can get an understanding of it. First we've chosen a couple of textures and the first texture was one we've just grabbed from the internet. It was this one here and we're going to make that into our normal map so that we can get a nice uh, kind of warp to that environment map and how we did that is we use this program to create our normal maps uh, if we just convert this one it should go ahead uh, oh, sorry we've converted the wrong one if we convert this one and that'll convert into a normal map as you can see here that's currently what it looks like so if we now start to smooth this out a little bit uh, using some of these techniques we'll start to see what the normal map will be like once the specular starts to hit it uh, let's close this one down over here it's taking the wrong image oh, there we go so we want it a little bit softer than that. Probably something around there. So it'll give that sort of smoothness, but uh, quite a, a good distortion still. So it shows like a bit of a, a bumpiness or a dints in your, in your metal. Uh, so once you've got a, a normal map like that, uh, you can save it out. So that is our normal map. We actually went with, uh, I believe it was this one here, which is quite uh, a little bit more subtle. Let me just show you that one. So it's really hard to see, but there are some smooth little dints in there uh, for the normal map. So you don't need a lot of uh, a lot of height on your normal map to get some good uh, results. So let's jump back to the asset. And in here we've got our diffuse, which is a, a yellow paint with a bit of dirt on it. And in there we've put uh, an alpha channel of uh, around about <clears throat> a third of the way up for our black and white. Because uh, the alpha channel, if you go and have a look at the uh, trains materials, the MT bump environment material has a diffuse which is the RGB and the environment is the reflection strength of that built-in environment map so we've made the strength uh, if you put it black there's no environment map going to show at all if you put it full white the entire environment opacity will show through so we've put it just around about uh, one third of the way to actually bring that environment map through. So that's the alpha of the diffuse and we've just got a a, a paint job or a color there that we're going to use. So that's the diffuse and then like I said our normal map is subtle but you'll still see a nice effect once we bring that onto the object and in the alpha channel you can see it a bit more that this is the uh, the specular map that is the, the 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 specular light is going to try and um, reflect on our object. So the darker colors are going to keep the reflection away, 
uh, sorry, the specular away, and the lighter colors will will bring it out a bit more. You can make this a little bit more intense if you want. I've left it um, rather subtle to give it a nice uh, paint job effect. So that's our, our normal. As you can see in the wiki, our normal map is RGB for the bump and A for the specular strength. So if we head over to our 3D program, we've got a cube here, oh, sorry, a rectangle here. And under there, we've named a material called uh, something. I've named it body, but you can name it whatever. Dot, and the important part, M dot T bump M V N E N V for environment. So T bump E N V has to be that to use that shader and trains. Uh, then I have left the uh, I've, I've increased the ambient color to two two zero two two zero two two zero. So I've increased it a little bit for ambient and diffuse. The specular I've brought down to one hundred and fifty, uh, one hundred and fifty, one hundred and fifty. But again, you can play around with these colors. Um, the specular level, I'm going to bring that up to 100. And the glossiness, I'm going to take into about 30. But again, you need to play around with these things to see what works for you. I'll just bring that down a little bit, over to 60. Under here, we've put out a fuse color and left it with uh, the image alpha because we need to use the alpha as the reflection uh, strength. Remember, so that needs to stay on. We jump back to our, our material, and then under the bump, we put our normal map, and that needs to have an alpha as well because that's the specular strength that's going to be used. So once you've done that, you apply that to your your cube, uh, your rectangle, whatever object you're using, and you'll export it out. Export it out under there. Start. Yes, override everything. And then you end up with something that looks like this. I've got a config. I've got my diffuse and my normal that we just looked at. Um, it's created these texture files for me. There's the test.im file. I've had to put a thumbnail in. And under our object, it's pretty basic. It's a, uh, it's a scenery item with a, a mesh table. That's really about it because we just want to show it in trains. So once you've got your object, yours is going to be a lot more complicated than this, I'm sure. You will come over to trains and you'll grab your object and drop it in. It's happy about that. And you'll right click on the object, preview asset, and hopefully you'll get the result you want. So that kind of bump and reflection map is uh, the result of having the alpha channels of your normal map give this sort of uh, specular change. Not a lot, but it's mainly the, that reflection uh, strength as well in your diffuse that's going to generate that. So if you want to recap and have a look at what we were trying to aim for, uh, let's go back to here, under here. So getting that reflection, the built-in reflection uh, map, you can obviously see it there, and getting a bit of uh, that's uh, leaving it smooth but a little bit rippled uh, is generated by those ripples in the normal map itself. So we jump to here, uh, those ripples in the normal map, which are hard to see. I'll try and increase them so you can see it. It's going to be a bit hard. Uh, you might be able to see them there. But what you want to get is some, some subtle ripples going on in your, in your normal map. Sorry, it's kind of hard to bring them once you've made it a bit subtle. But you can see them in there, I think. Uh, so you don't need an overpowering normal map. Uh, and once you get that normal map in there, it will create those ripples for you. Uh, and just to demonstrate without, um, I was say, without having those ripples, I was going to show you what it looked like. But basically just put a, a flat color in there and you should be able to see for yourself that it won't have those ripples. So hopefully that helps. Uh, people understand using the T-Bump environment uh, map
and you can also use or get this effect using the the T bump gloss and that'll give you control over the reflection that you want to use the spherical map reflection um, there's a tutorial on that if you need help but uh, if you need more information on T bump environment uh, please jump on the forums and let us know otherwise we uh, hope you learn something from the tutorial cheers